Hello, I'm David Broadhead and welcome to the business programme here on Kirkley's Local TV. We now live in a digital world with massive potential negative repercussions for those traditional analogue businesses that are failing to adapt successfully. The current carnage on the bricks and mortar high street is a perfect example. Many of these organisations have invested significantly in digital innovation, so purely going digital is not the simple answer and a guarantee of success. Maybe we have to go back and understand and implement some of the more basic traditional analogue concepts, especially in marketing, before we can expect to be successful in a digital context. Today's guest is Andy Earnshaw, a highly experienced and successful local marketing expert who we have invited along today so we can chat about the traditional aspects of marketing from a practical perspective, the so-called 7Ps. In a future edition, I'll be chatting to a local digital marketing expert where we can build on the ideas we explore and develop here. It might be an overly simplistic approach I've taken, but I think it might help a lot of businesses along the way. Andy, good to see you again and thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. Could we start by your telling us a little bit about yourself, your career to date? Yeah, I was born and bred in Huddersfield, David. Um, and then after I studied for A-levels, I went into accountancy. Don't switch off now, it well. gets better. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, st I went into um, sales, sales and marketing roles uh, without knowing too much theory about it. So I was a late learner for uh, marketing. I uh, studied the CIM route. I didn't do a degree route. It was a postgrad CIM route. And then uh, after having uh, a couple of businesses, uh, I started doing um, marketing consultancy around a marketing so consultancy company in this area. So I know kind of a lot of businesses around here. And, uh, and over the last um, five years, I've been um, working at Traffic Clear Limited, which is again a Huddersfield based business now in, in uh, Brig House. And uh, we've grown the business quite well. It's a good little team, so I've been enjoying that. So what do you find so enjoyable about marketing? I think it's because marketing um, underpins a business. I think a good quality marketing plan is about 80% of a business plan. Just add some bits here and there, the financials, a bit of uh, stuff about tech and things. But really, it, it's, it's about where you are now as a business, where you want to get to, and how you're going to get there. So it's about setting objectives and working out um, a strong strategy on, on how you're going to achieve those objectives. So that's kind of what I like about it. I think it, you, it, you touch all aspects of a business in a marketing plan uh, and delivering marketing, which is why, you know, and in fact, the subject of today is all part of a marketing plan, which I'm sure we're going to go through. Yeah. Let's begin now to, by looking at the academic aspect of, of marketing and start with exploring conceptually the, the seven P model mm. and is it applicable across all markets? Yeah I mean the, uh, yes it is you, because it can be you can have a bit of a different balance because the seven P's is all about seven elements of marketing all beginning with P price, product, place, promotion, people, physical evidence and process so there's these seven P's and it's the mix it's the balance of those seven P's that hopefully if you get it right make sure that your offer in its target market or your business or a particular product offer is found attractive by your target market. The first P is product, either physical or service. Obviously, we've got to build that in. What do you see as some of the key issues to be considered when getting what you offer right for the marketplace? So from a, a product point of view, um, you've got to understand what the, the customer wants. It's the same as anything else, a product or a service. So you, you almost need to go and understand what the customer really wants. And then you may have a standard product that you can change a little bit, hence the screw in the, in, the, in the product that I've just been talking about, that you might be able to provide a product for a customer that's absolutely right for them. Or a service, you can change your service delivery, made. somebody might want it online, which I know we're gonna discuss, or um, they might want something face to face. So the product is, that's probably the foundation stone of, of the seven P's. The second P is place. Mm -hmm. Is this where traditional retailers are struggling and in that they aren't where the customers are? Yeah, possibly. I mean, I mean, we went from bricks and mortar, as it was called, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Where people had shops, 
shop front. Um, they may have delivered a service, you know, from some premises or other. Uh, and then um, there was there were people offering services online, products online. The bricks and mortar people tried to go online as well, but they're a bit late to the party. And so, you know, f I, so there's traditional companies that that can trade online and set up to do exactly that and they've got a fantastic offering the amazons of the world boohoo's and the rest of it so but there is a space for for certain retail thirdly we've got price mm. have you any great examples of how this affects marketing particularly maybe in regard to quality which you've alluded to earlier? Oh, just don't don't trade on price don't have price as a differentiator it's a one-way street and it's downhill it's the rest uh, of the bottom. Oh, exactly. And if you think about it, if you've got a certain cost of a product, say it's a pound, whatever it may be, and you put 50p on top, so you've got 50, 50p profit in that. If you discount that by half of your profit, 25p, so discount it by a sixth, you're only making half your profit, but you're in discounting by a, so discounting by a sixth of your selling price halves your profit. And people don't realise these, these relationships on price. But whatever I say, find out what products deliver a, a, val a good, strong value proposition to your customers. So work out a price for that for your customers and justify that price. Don't discount. Say, well, I know we might be 50% 50p more expensive, but We've got them in stock, ours does this, it says 15 minutes of your installation time, whatever it may be, justify the price, don't discount. So if you've got a price, how do you promote that, which is the next P? Um, is this where the digital world really comes into its own and is there still room for a slick salesperson? I think it depends what you're selling, very much so. Um, more complicated, probably industrial products, B2B kind of selling, you probably need somebody to go out and understand exactly what the customer wants and then obviously if, you, if you're selling products online it's easy to catch people online um, through promotional activity online so th th there's room for, for each if you like and it depends what you're selling and who you're selling it to. Fifth element is people mm. are we still as neatly segmented as the advertising giants of the 90s had us believe and then exploited us does the heading focus it on internal people as well as just external? Yeah. I mean, when I let my, my marketing people was the, the people element with people in your business, because a good business is built around good people. You know, you've got to invest in those. So it's all about choosing the right people to start with, using the right ways to find new people. So define what you need in your yeah. business. How many times have you walked out of a shop then or closed a web page because the process and the time taken was just too complex or time consuming? How important is getting the processes aspect of marketing right? Process, very important. You, you know, whatever your business is, you've got to have a, a really good process. And, and that links then in your seven Ps, it links to your people. Because if you get new people in your business, if, it, if you can train them to follow a process, because it's there, they're going to be able to pick up the business work a lot, a lot quicker, and give you a, a quicker return. But, and the other thing about process, if you know a process works, Keep on with that process because then your business will deliver a consistent level of high quality service to your customers. So process is really important. Finally, we get to physical evidence. Mm. Car sales outlets where you can't park. <laughs> Organisations proudly displaying signs that saying don't abuse the staff. You, well, think? you might need <laughs> a car because you have to catch, catch you in the bus now. <laughs> well, that's true. Um, the list could go on and on. Yeah. Have you any particular horror stories that you could share with us on I've probably bad got examples. horror stories, but maybe I'll not be able to quote them here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because I, get well, I think there's lots of examples yeah. that we can all but experience there, aren't Yeah, there? so physical evidence, really this covers, um, you know, do you, if, it, if it's your staff are face to face with, with your con customers, you know, do they always look smart? Yeah. Do they need to look smart? You know, but if they are and they're uniformed, are they all in those you, the uniforms? Is there some kind of standard? Are you pre do your premises reflect your brand? You know, if you've got a high quality brand, your premises should be like that. You know, the Porsche garages should be slick. They should deliver extra things, if you like, 
Uh, you should be able to go and pop your car in for service and, and log on to, to Wi-Fi, um, get lots of extra information, um, choose your next car, whatever it may be. The, you, you know, the premises, anything related to the physical evidence is to do with your, your, your website, your leaflets, things like that. So if, if you want to present as having a really good quality, slick, uh, organised business, don't take five minutes to deliver your homepage and your website. You know, it all ties in because if people doubt your brand um, or doubt your service through your website not delivering, you don't want that. So everything's got to be in place. So physical evidence, again, is really important and very and related to, you know, high quality of the products, high quality of your staff. If you've got ISO processes or physical evidence, show it, you know, tell people. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, that's all for this week. Once more, I'd like to thank Andy Earnshaw for sharing his thoughts and experience with us and hopefully inspiring you to get your marketing basics in order. And I look forward to seeing you next time here on the Business Programme on Kirklees Local TV. Goodbye. <laughs>